Welcome to Usability in Human Factors Electronic Health Records. This is Lecture C. We are going to continue our discussion on electronic health records and usability, focusing on usability evaluation. By the end of this unit, students will be able to 1. Explain how user-centered design can enhance adoption of EHRs, 2. Discuss the role of usability testing, training, and implementation of electronic health records. Three, describe Web 2.0 and novel concepts in system design. Four, identify potential methods of assessing and rating EHR usability when selecting an appropriate EHR system. Usability evaluation is challenging because of many factors. Healthcare users have complex needs, operate under time pressure, and are often interrupted have colleagues with which they must communicate frequently and accurately and do their work in multiple locations. There are over 50 specialties, each with different needs. Legal, ethical, moral, social, and cost imperatives all influence the complexity of their work. It is often difficult to get clinician feedback due to clinician busyness and the perception that it does not directly benefit them confidentiality considerations and the need to not interfere with ongoing critical work can make studying problems in the field difficult. As we've mentioned before, there can be challenges in finding information. Institutions are liable for errors created by systems, since legal contracts usually include a hold harmless clause, meaning that the vendor is not responsible. The rationale for this is the concept of learned intermediary, that doctors and others using the system are highly educated, knowledgeable people whose responsibility it is to ensure that patients get safe care, regardless of the computer system. Some contracts are reported to restrict what a customer can say about a product even to other customers of the same product. These facts are important because in a 2006 study, 25% of medication errors were traceable to the computing technology and 82% of these were from data entry or CPOE functions. Usability includes ease of use, usefulness, and efficiency. In healthcare, minimizing user error is of utmost importance, as is providing cognitive support to clinical activities. Errors can be errors of commission, such as placing data in the wrong patient chart, or omission, such as the user failing to notice an abnormal result due to the interface. We also want to avoid failure to complete tasks. It is important to keep in mind that usability is not just the screen design, but includes all of the factors which can affect the effectiveness and ease of use of the software. This includes the context in which the program is used, which includes the physical location, type of work, interruptions, and other factors. In healthcare, there are many different environments. Consider the difference between an intensive care unit and a small family practice, and these should be taken into account. Design needs to be based on evidence. One myth is that no training is needed if the usability is good enough, but healthcare is complex. Software for healthcare is bound to be complex, and we must find ways to implement training. User-centered design has sometimes been mistaken as just giving users what they want. While it is of utmost importance to engage users from the beginning, they may be inarticulate, unaware of their real needs or what can be done in software, and untrained in the science of cognition and human-computer interaction. Health IT must accommodate workflow, but healthcare workflow changes with time, and systems must accommodate this. What is needed is more flexibility of data and presentation. Usability is an area of research, and particularly for EHRs, there is a lot we don't know. 
In the next two years, much government-funded research is being done to try to clarify the best ways of creating software that really provides support to clinicians. But the same way that the airline industry never stops studying and trying to improve its processes for greater safety and efficiency, the EHR industry must not stop studying and improving EHR design. Evidence-based design means that design is done on the basis of careful experiments that clarify what the best methods are. For example, at the top right, we see the data from an experiment that finds out what people's preferred character height is. On the right are the results of an experiment, which examines how people's ability to see text needs more contrast as people get older. So, if we were making a website for older people, we could take this research into account and make the site with more contrast. At the bottoms are three reports which give guidelines for EHR usability. More will be available from this site in the future. These quotes from Consumer Reports Car Reviews shows two different flavors of review. One is subjective and describes the qualitative experience of a trained driver. The other is objective and mentions statistics and exact measurements. Usability testing can involve two approaches, subjective and objective. An example of the first is expert criticism, art criticism, such as the quote from the car review on the previous slide. The second approach is objective or qualitative, such as the second quote which states specific measurements. Both are valuable in obtaining a complete picture of a system and its value. These two methods reflect two different overall approaches to usability evaluation. Subjective qualitative methods examine the user experience in detail by doing thick descriptions, detailed descriptions of what the user experienced from their own subjective point of view. It is understood that different users will vary in their appraisal and that these differences are expected. These are nevertheless rigorous methods. The objectivist quantitative approach is based on the idea that believable knowledge is derived from measurement of attributes that are inherent in a system. So all observers should agree on both what the measurement results are and on what results are considered better or worse. Subjectivist and objectivist methods are complementary. Both are useful and convey valuable information in our understanding of systems. The subjective experience of users, whatever the objective facts, is an important influence in their acceptance and use of a system. For example, objective measurements may show that the time for two different systems to perform a task is the same. However, if subjectively users experience that it takes more time and or is more frustrating to use one system than the other, this will affect their opinion and acceptance of the system and their behavior with it. The interaction design can affect time perception. For example, providing a progress bar as shown earlier can decrease user frustration and perception of how long it takes. People who study usability have shown that if a user perceives that they are continually making progress toward their goal, they will accept systems that involve a lot of clicks even if it takes more time. When we are evaluating a system, it is usually necessary to have mixed methods, such as a combination of focus groups, in-lab testing, observation of users in their normal work environment, expert heuristic evaluation, and statistical analysis, for example, of log files, after the system has been rolled out. Creating a good evaluation plan is key to understanding usability problems. Now we will discuss specific formal methods of usability evaluation that are commonly used. Heuristic evaluation involves having a trained expert examine a system by using it. 
often with a specific scenario that reflects the things a typical user needs to do, and noting how it rates on Norman's 10 usability heuristics, which are listed here. These were covered in a previous lecture. They then report to the programmers, vendor, and administrators of the project on what problems were discovered so that they can be fixed. Focus groups are a common way of obtaining information from typical users, both during development when we need to find out what typical tasks, problems, and issues users encounter in their work, and during laboratory testing phases and after deployment, when there is a system with which they can interact and give comments. In order to help users speak freely, it is important to do several things. These are to group similar users together so that they are peers with a common interest and equal standing within the group. For ethical reasons, often one must obtain institutional review board approval and this may involve ensuring that the privacy of what users say is respected, that their supervisors and others will not be told, including not telling who participated, that recordings and other information will be kept in appropriately locked rooms and computers and destroyed at the end of the study, and that the users are not members of a vulnerable group, such as patients, students, employees, who could be coerced by supervisors or given the impression for patients that their treatment could be affected by their decision to participate or not. Informed consent procedures must be used. Especially with busy clinicians, it is important to respect their time commitment and officially release people on time at the end of the session, though some may want to stay to continue discussion voluntarily. To facilitate an atmosphere where people will feel relaxed and talk, it is usual to provide food and drink. You may also need to compensate users, particularly busy clinicians. Use open-ended questions that will draw people to talk, and if they seem expansive on a topic, you can prompt them further to keep the conversations flowing. Subjects who haven't spoken much can be prompted with questions. It is important to take notes and record the meeting using two or more recorders, digital or tape, after first asking participants for permission. These recordings are then transcribed and coded according to themes that emerge from what users said. There is software to assist with this. Please see the resources list. Think Aloud protocols involve having a typical user use the system in a quiet office while software captures video of their screen actions and their voice and, if desired, face as they use the system. In order to compare users accurately, one prepares a set of typical tasks and or scenarios they must follow in using the system. The user is told to think aloud, that is, just say whatever is on their mind as they use the system. You may want to give them a practice task so they can become familiar with the setup and with thinking aloud. The screen capture and voice video are analyzed to find themes, patterns, time for different tasks, and other information of interest. Moray software is a very helpful tool that helps capture and analyze video of users' interactions with the system and can automatically compile information on time on task, URLs clicked on, and other parameters. It is important to present problems found to decision makers. Creating short video clips of highlights of the testing can help show and convince them that problems exist and how they occur. It is also useful to show programmers or others responsible for changes. Field observations, that is, the researcher observes clinicians using the system by being present and taking notes while being careful not to intrude in work processes, is very important before a system is built as part of formative evaluation to tell us things like what the workflow of staff processes is, what kind of time constraints, collaboration, interruptions, noise, patient flow, and other processes they must deal with, and what the information needs and information flow is in the workplace. The ideal EHR must accommodate these factors robustly. 
Field usability testing is also important to examine whether there are problems after deployment when the normal workplace setting can introduce many additional factors not present in the laboratory. Here, we can use systematic field observation. The Moray remote testing feature can also be used to monitor use remotely. Field usability testing can also include observation, log file analysis, user interviews, and analysis of help desk reports. It is particularly important to monitor problems that arise soon after deployment. Cognitive walkthrough is a method of inspecting software for problems by having an expert evaluator use the system for a typical task. As the expert carries out the task, he or she makes note of each goal and sub-goal, each step, what information a user must know to carry out the step, the system's response, any potential problems that could arise, and potential solutions if they are known. These are listed line by line. The expert can classify the problems by degree of severity when reporting them. For example, cosmetic problems are the least urgent, while problems that could create medical errors, crash the system, or other severe consequences would be the highest priority to fix. This is an example of a cognitive walkthrough transcript. Computerized Physician Order Entry, CPOE, is a special case of EHR. These programs allow clinicians to enter orders such as drug or other treatment orders. Therefore, if there are errors, they can cause serious damage, including fatalities. This has been the cause of much discussion in recent years. The process of making orders has high cognitive demands, which means that the user interaction with the system must be especially well designed. Dr. Ross Kopel in 2005 published articles discussing flaws in CPOE systems. Interface flaws have included inability to clearly identify the patient for whom orders are being submitted, inability to view all the medications on a single screen, and so to get a full view of the medical condition, and login and logout failures which can lead to accidentally putting in orders for a different patient. Extra steps may be required to activate orders. If not done, this can lead to failure of the order. Automated functions may not always produce the appropriate result. In addition, if a workplace is dependent on a computer system, downtime can lead to delays in treatment. Some systems interpret orders given near midnight as being on the next day, which can lead to treatment delay. Researchers have found many usability problems with CPOE systems. This slide shows some of the main problems which can lead to errors. Because of these dangers, researchers have put forth certain design recommendations for CPOE systems, but this is an area of ongoing research. Technology affects how work is done and how users think, in both the short and long term. Patel et al. studied the effects of using a system on users' long-term work. They found that there were two main approaches to getting information from the EHR, a hypothesis-driven strategy in which the clinician looks for information based on their ideas of what the patient's problem is, and a screen-driven strategy in which they follow the screen organization. They also found that with experience, novices changed from a hypothesis-driven to a screen-driven strategy. What they found is that paper-based records had connected writing which formed a complete story. EMR records, on the other hand, had more information on the patient's medical history, lifestyle, and diagnoses. The EMR information was in point form and tended to follow the system organization. It also did not convey the time course of the patient's condition as well as paper records. One of the most interesting things in this study is that even after using the EMR and going back to paper, clinicians showed a permanent change 
in the way they wrote their notes. They changed to a format more similar to that of the EMR, with little connecting narrative and limited time information. Web 2.0 is a term used to describe modern internet approaches which give the user much more control and allow them to create and share information. For example, we can post reviews of products we have bought on Amazon to let other customers have the benefit of our experience. We can easily have blogs without having to know computer programming. Systems can make recommendations, for example, for products we might be interested in based on learning from the patterns of other users. This is called crowdsourcing. Using Web 2.0 techniques in the EHR could allow more user control, better user experiences, and new forms of information display and social networking. This is an area for research. This concludes Lecture C of Usability and Human Factors Electronic Health Records. Overall, usability is a complicated area but is very important for successful deployment of systems. Assessing the usability of a system before purchase and making sure it is usable in actual practice is critical to user acceptance. Much research is being done on improving the way EHRs support clinicians. It is important to keep aware of new developments and apply them in practice.